Hi, and welcome to another flipping video. Uh, today we're looking at the muscular system. It's a follow-up from last video, the skeletal system for the preliminary course. You know, there's 650 muscles in the body, and they pretty much make up half your weight. Uh, what are they used for? Well, to produce movement. Um, they're essential for our posture, and involuntary muscles help the heart. Well, the heart, we know, is a, a muscle that beats. Uh, muscles helps us to breathe, to digest, and things like that. So let's look at the syllabus points. And our first dot point is identifying the major muscles in, of movement. Our second dot point is the muscle relationship. So knowing what the agonist and the antagonist is. And our third dot point is the types of contraction. So we're looking at the concentric contractions, eccentric and isotonic and isometric. A student's learn abouts is identifying the location or the major muscles involved in the movement and the joint action. Our second dot point is to perform and analyze movements. So for example, the overarm throw. We want to identify the muscles involved and the joint actions. So what is our learning intention? Well, if we go by the syllabus points, our first learning intention is to be able to identify the location of the major muscles um, involved in the, in the movement and its related joint actions, and also to be able to perform and analyze movements. And to be successful, hopefully by the end of this uh, session or through your learning activities, that uh, you firstly you be able to uh, identify the location of the major muscles, identify and explain how movement and joint actions can uh, contract muscles, and also to analyze the movement and the bones involved and the joint action, and analyze much uh, muscles involved in the types of contraction. So what are the different types of muscles? Firstly is the cardiac muscle. The cardiac muscle, as you know, is, is well, if you put the word cardio, cardiac, that means our heart. So our heart is a muscle and it's an involuntary muscle, which means it beats by itself, it works by itself. Our next type of muscle is a smooth muscle. And a smooth muscle is pretty much like, well, it's similar to the heart where it's involuntary, which means it works by itself. So you probably find those in blood vessels um, also in um, the intestines, and they're the types of muscles you have absolutely no control over. They'll, they'll work by themselves. Our next is the skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles is voluntary muscles. They're only worked if we contract them. So the muscles that I'll be explaining next are mostly um, voluntary muscles. And voluntary muscles are connected to our bones by tendons. Okay, right now let's look at the muscles. Don't forget that in order to uh, explain how the muscles contract, you need to know the joint location and also the joint action. So let's look at the upper body, okay? Um, I'll, I'll just take my shirt off so you can see. Okay, so let's have a look at the biceps. The biceps, as you know, is uh, on our arms. Well, I'm sure everyone knows what a bicep is. Everyone's trying to work those out. Okay, so the bicep is on our anterior view. Okay, remember the anterior is the front, posterior is the back, okay, as we learned from previous uh, video. So these are our biceps. What, what other muscles we can also find in our body, is on our front body, on our anterior view, is our pectorius, where the arrow is pointing, and also our rectus abdominis. You also notice that the deltoid, where the arrow is pointing as well, is uh, on our posterior view, but the deltoid also carries over to the anterior view, the, sorry, the anterior view also carries over to the posterior view. Okay, let me turn around. So on the back, you can see the trapezius. You can also see the deltoid. You've also got the latissimus dorsi and the erecta spinae. Okay, as I mentioned, you need to know the joint actions and also um, the location of those muscles, and that's something that we'll look at in, the, in a minute. Um, but before we do that, let's have a look at the muscles on our lower uh, part of the body, which mainly is our legs. So this is the lower half of the body, and our two major muscles in this area are our quadriceps and our tibius anterior. So this is the uh, posterior view of the legs. 
And so our major muscles here are our solus, our Achilles tendon, our gastrocnemius, and our hamstrings. Most movement will require several muscles working together. Most skeletal muscles are therefore arranged to have opposing muscles. And these are usually called an agonist and antagonist. The muscle that's causing the desired contraction is called the prime mover. That's usually the agonist. While the agonist is contracting, the opposite muscle is relaxing or lengthening. So therefore the muscle that's contracting is shortening. That's usually called the agonist and the muscle that's length, uh, lengthening and relaxing is the antagonist. So for example, if I was to do a bicep curl, you'll notice that my angle has decreased. So therefore, my bicep has is contracting and so for, for the muscles shortening. At the same time, the opposite muscle being the tricep is relaxing and is lengthening. So if I'm talking about movement in a related joints, you can see that when I was explaining the bicep shortening, it's actually in the movement of flexion. When I'm extending my arm, you'll notice the muscle that's contracting now is now the tricep. So the tricep is now become the agonist and the biceps the antagonist. So therefore, if I flex, it's my bicep. If I'm extending my arm, it's my tricep. Let's look at other movements. At the gym, you've probably seen a lat pull down machine. What that is, is a bar where you can either pull it down or push it up. So in this regards, if I'm pushing it up, my deltoid is my agonist because it's contracting. So therefore it's shortening, the muscle shortening. The muscle that is, is relaxing is my lat latissimus dorsi. So, and the movement would be, I'm abducting. So my arm is abducting, the muscle that's contracting is my deltoid. So let's have a look at the overarm throw and let's analyze it. So firstly, if we could mimic the overarm throw, we see that there's two joints that's pretty much being used. We've got the shoulder joint, okay, which is a ball and socket joint, and we've also got the elbow joint, and the elbow joint is a hinge joint. So the elbow is then extended, and when it's extended, the tricep is your agonist and however, your bicep will obviously be your antagonist. So in regards with the shoulder, because the shoulder is abducting, the muscle that's contracting there is the deltoid. That was the withdrawal phase. Now we're gonna look at the throwing phase. And then with the throwing phase, you see in this stage that the, uh, the, bicep, the, the elbow is flexing, so it's in flexion. So therefore, if the elbow is flexing, the muscle that's contracting is the bicep. In this case, you'll see that the uh, deltoid, well the anterior deltoid, because anterior is the front, deltoid is contracting, which, and also the pectoris major is contracting as well. So they are the agonists. So once again, analyzing the throwing arm, we see that the, the elbow, sorry, the shoulder joint, being a ball and socket joint, is one that is a main contributor to the movement, and so is our elbow joint being a, elbow joint being a uh, hinge joint. So when we're about to throw, the muscles that are contracting is our pectoris major and our deltoid. They're obviously the agonists, and uh, we see that our biceps are contracting as well. As we throw, oh, and that's, that's obviously contracting due to the flexion of uh, the arm. As we throw, we see that our arm becomes extended, so that's extension. So now the muscle that's contracting is our tricep, being our agonist. Our antagonist in that case will be the bicep. And we see that the movement that's caused is now abduction. Again, moving away from the body. In this case, the muscle that is also that contracting is the posterior deltoid, posterior being the back. So finally, let's look at the muscle contractions. There is three. Well, two of them are basically linked together. 
So one is an isotonic contraction and that involves both a concentric and eccentric contraction. A concentric contraction is when the muscle shortens. So if I was to look at my bicep, bringing the bicep curl up, muscle shortening, that's a concentric uh, um, contraction. If I was to extend my arm, that is now an eccentric contraction and my muscle contracts, but it's lengthening. While however, a concentric contraction is when the muscle contracts, but it's shortening. Now we sometimes have uh, muscles that contract, but do not shorten or lengthen. We find that in certain sports such as uh, a sprinter who's just getting ready to sprint and they're in the box. Their muscles are contracting, but you notice they're not shortening or lengthening. Um, if I was to ask you to do a plank, you're holding your abdominal muscles, but it's not shortening or lengthening. If I was to look at this wall behind me and push on it, my arm muscles are contracting, my biceps, my triceps are contracting. However, it's not shortening or lengthening. It's just basically pushing up against the wall. So, and that's called an isometric contraction. So thanks again for watching one of my videos and good luck with your studies.